Hello Internet, I'm David Z, aka Spastic, and I make videos about a Japanese top-down shooter series for YouTube. But in all seriousness, I've actually gotten a lot of messages asking me to make a tutorial on Walfus related videos, and even though I've only done four videos so far, uh, I'd say why the hell not? Let's add another one to my repertoire. This video right here is to teach you how to make a Walfus video from scratch, as if you just installed your new computer and you want to make a Walfus video for some reason. Well, here's the top three things you need to do. First, you're going to need Create.Swift. This is the program where you make all your Walfus cartoons. It's called Walfus because it's on the Walfus blog, which I'll show you how to look by in a second. Second, you're going to need Cam Studio. If you don't have Cam Studio, Camtasia, or any of those other video capturing programs will work. Third, you're going to need a good video editing program. Now, this is going to be a little trickier because good video editing programs are a little harder to find for free. With that said, let's begin! Open your web browser, type in the search engine W A L F A S, Walfus. It should be the first thing that pops up, walfus.org. Click that. Wait for the site to load. Go to Flash. Scroll down. You'll see an image of the current version of Create.Swift. Right click on that. Click Save Link As. And you can save it as Create.Swift or anything you'd like. Wait for that to download. It's 4.8 megabytes. Shouldn't take too long. Voila! Close that, go to Open File, select your version of Create.Swift, and there you go. But we're not done yet. We're going to need something to record with. Go to a new web browser. Type in Cam Studio. Should be the first thing that pops up, camstudio.org. Click that. Scroll down past all the ads and you'll find download links. I'd recommend getting 2.0 also. I'd recommend getting Cam Studio Lossless Codec 1.4. Those links are dead. If you do a few searches for them, I'm pretty sure you'll find it. Now before we can start Walfusing, we're going to need to do a little setup. Go to Menu, go to Option, go to Hotkeys. This is where you'll program all of your eye movements and all of your mouth movements. It all depends on the number of the eye or mouth you're going to use. To know what eye or mouth you're going to use, go to Mouth, and you'll notice this none here counts as the first mouth. So for every number, add an additional number. If you want to use Mouth 1, type in 2. Mouth 3, type in 4, etc. With the eyes, the first eye is the first eye, so just type in the number of the eye that you want. Generally, I like to have one closed mouth and one open mouth for each two set of keys, and I use the first four keys for eye movements. So you can look around, look left, look angry, blink, and so on and so forth. Hitting the F key will switch your character going left and right. Hold down the mouse buttons to make the character move around. Hit the F key while hitting the mouse button so you can make him change direction. Now this is what that looks like with the mouse turned off. Click on the head of the character to rotate your character. Hold control and then click to keep the character's orientation in place while you move him. Hold shift and click to change the size of your character. Press the M button for more advanced options. This is if you need absolute precision when it comes to scaling or rotating your character. It also works on text boxes too. To add a text box, go to Menu, Insert, Bubble, Speech. Press F to rotate the bubble. Hold Shift to scale the size of both the bubble and the text. Hold Control and Shift to change the size of the bubble only. Hold Control to move the bubble's location. And simply left click to move the entire bubble itself. Then double click to add text. To select the font of your bubble, go down to the bubble, click Set Font, then choose the font that you'd like. Generally, you'll want to stay with wild words unless it's a stylistic choice. If you simply want text about the box, go to Insert, Bubble, Floating. A floating text box with a gigabyte font is generally good for sound effects. Press M for the more advanced options for scaling the bubble, but if you'd like to do it manually, click the bubble and select Options. Now that we got the basics down, let's try some frame-by-frame -frame animation. To have a character holding something, go to Insert, Object, then scroll down to Arm, Bent. Straight arms can be recolored with C, but bent arms need to be recolored manually with an external program. The controls for moving and resizing objects are just the same as the characters. To prep your character for the external arms, click on your character, hit Change Parts, select Arms, then select None. To change whether an object or character is in the foreground or background, go down to the object or character, select Edit, then Send to Front, Bring Forward, Bring Backward, or Send to Back. When you're ready to start animating, go up to the Scene banner, select Scene Info, then name your scene something. Once you name your scene, go back up to the Scene banner and hit the Save Scene button. 
Now you're ready to start adding parts, which will become the frames for your animation. Adding new parts will automatically save the current part, so be careful not to add a part unless you're satisfied with the current part. To move between the different frames, hit the spacebar to enter theater mode, then hit left and right to switch between the different frames. Be warned that you will lose unsaved progress if you move between the different parts, but this can also be used as a good tool to start over. And once everything looks fluid and natural, you're ready to start recording. To add a background, simply go down to Menu and hit Background. To get the most use out of your background, click off Auto Scale, then zoom in. To center your background, use location controls to move the background up, down, left, or right. Sadly, or at least as far as I know, you can't move backgrounds as easily as you can move characters or objects. However, you can reposition a background between parts. Simply move the background in increments, and then save your progress. Sometimes Create.Swift won't have the object or background that you need. In my collaboration with Mini Witch 3, I needed to custom make a half-bitten Moonrock and Moonrod Chucks for you, you could eat. These are actually separate PNG files I had to make with an external image editor. To import an image, go to Menu, Insert, Image, then type in the file location. I prefer to use PNG images because they contain alpha support for transparency and less image noise than typical JPGs. Be warned that imported images do not contain the smoothness of the vector-drawn objects of Create.Swift, so they'll begin to blur if you zoom in too closely. Custom characters can be imported or exported thanks to their character-specific DNA. To export a character's DNA, select a character and hit Show DNA, then highlight the character's DNA and hit Ctrl C to copy. Paste it into a separate notepad if you want to keep a backup archive of your characters or post on the internet for others to use. To import custom DNA, go to Menu, Toys, Cloning Capsule. Then double-click the capsule and insert the DNA. Select the capsule and hit Eject to bring your character into the scene. Once you're done, select the capsule and hit Disassemble to get rid of it. Now let's make a custom character from scratch. Go to Menu and select New Character. It'll make a randomly generated character that you'll need to clean up first before you can start making that new character. My method is to remove the hat, remove the items, remove the accessories, remove the back, set the shoes to Reimu because it's a neutral color, set the arms to Marisa because it's a neutral color, set the mouth to None and the eyes to One. To name your character, select the character, hit Options, type in the name, then hit Set to save the name. When designing a character, try to stick to a specific color palette. If you'll notice the canon characters, they tend to stick to two or four base colors. For this Marisa Patchouli love child I'm making, I'm sticking to red, yellow, and purple. To change the hair color of your character, select the character and hit Colorize. Each channel controls the red, green, and blue values for the hair. Try not to add a hat until the hair color and style has been solidified, as some hairstyles can actually go through some hats. Once you're done, you can select the character and hit the Save button to save it to Create.Swift, or you can simply copy down the DNA and save it to a separate notepad file. It wouldn't be Toho Project without bullets. Go down to Menu, select Insert, Object, then scroll down until you see the bullets. To make an elaborate Danmaku pattern, go down to the object and select Clusterize, then double-click the Clusterized object to change its properties. These properties can be changed between parts if you'd like the bullets to move. To change the color of the bullet, simply hit the C button. To have bullets flying everywhere, select the object and select Rain. Select the Rain and select Options if you'd like to control what direction and how fast the bullets are going. To make them go in a straight line, simply select the Y direction and set both to zero. To add more bullets, simply change the density. For each bullet direction, the box on the left controls the minimum speed, while the box on the right controls the maximum speed. Please note that each time you change the color of your bullets, or each time you move between parts, the bullet pattern will start over again. If you'd like to have Reimu's Hack Sign Burn Everything animation, go to Menu, Toys, Grouchy Reimu. Select her and hit Hey Reimu. Be sure your progress is saved or you have some kind of backup, because doing this will kill every single character you have on screen. If you'd like to utilize the Death by Yuyuko background that I used at the end of Toho Sketches Yuyuko Edition, go to Menu, Background, scroll down to just the 40% mark, and select Death by Yuyuko. Double-click Yuyuko's mouth so she'll start eating characters. Then double-click it again to make her stop. Now let's do some recording. Just put the recording region around your characters and you're ready to record. Press the spacebar to get rid of the menu button so they don't get in the way of recording. Your first method for making a video, what I do, is what I call Walthus Puppetry, lip-syncing the character voices using the number keys for eye and mouth movements. 
While I'm doing this, I'll have the sound playing in the background. If it's not perfectly in sync, it can usually be fixed in editing. If you don't have the specific eye or mouth that you need, simply pause the recording, change the part, then start recording again once it's in place. The other method, and the most popular by far, is recording still frames with text boxes. Simply move everything you need into place, hit the record button, then pause once you have enough of that frame. After recording enough video, hit the stop button to save your progress. Once you've gotten all the video done, open up your editing program and sync it up to the audio. If you did the puppetry correctly, there'll be little need for fixing the lip sync and post. Come on down to Moko's Grill Bird Stand, where the bird is the word. Don't give me none of that business while mom's the word or the bird says mom because the bird is dead in all my grills. I don't know your favorite sauces. Now even though this is only a 9 second clip, let's see what went into making that. As you can see, that 9 second clip required 45 seconds of animation. Once you think you've finished your video, watch it a couple times to make sure there's no errors in editing. If you're absolutely sure there are no errors, you're ready to render it and upload it to YouTube. Then just wait for the comments to roll in. Now if people give good feedback, that's good, that's very good. But if people give you bad feedback, that can also be good for this reason. It tells you what you're doing wrong and how you can improve. So take their comments to your heart and use them for your next video. If someone says your jokes are taking too long, shorten the jokes. If people say it's too fast paced, slow it down. If people say it's too slow, speed it up, and so on and so forth. You get enough advice, and it pretty much becomes intuitive after that. Now if you want to know how to write skits for these kinds of things, I would probably recommend looking up books on writing. My current go-to book is Robert McKee's Story. Very nice book, teaches you about how to create turning points, how to make even absurdist stories, like Monty Python-esque jokes. But if that's a little too complex for you, there's also... The Anatomy of Story by John Truby, which is a little more intuitive, less outlining kind of stuff, but even if this is too complex for you, then I would recommend the classic fallback Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, which teaches you how to make the classic archetypal story with likable characters and certain beats that you gotta hit. But of course, this is just an animation tutorial, not really a writing tutorial. So I guess I will see you next time when I make my next Walfus video.